Hello and welcome to Empire of War Games. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about the Thousand Suns Combat Patrol in specific because there has been a lot of negative buzz around it and I wanted to explain why that is, what GW could do to improve that and yeah, why people are just generally negative about the box. Alright, first up here is a look at the Thousand Suns Combat Patrol box. I will obviously do a Combat Patrol analysis video. This one is not going to replace that. Uh, because the Combat Patrol analysis includes, is the box worth to buy twice? How does the list look like? What does the list look like if you combine two of these boxes? And other expansion methods, other savings, and so on. Just a lot of additional stuff and more in-depth things to talk about. What I'm doing here is just talking about the two main reasons why this box is not very well received. And the first one are the Zangors. And Zangors are literally everywhere and they've always been everywhere. And that's a big problem. Thousand Suns players usually, at least all of the ones I know, play Thousand Suns because they like Rubric Marines. Who knew? They like Egyptian looking Space Marines. And they look really cool and they are definitely the highlight of the army. And people just accept Zangors because they are a necessary evil. The range is very small. That's another reason why what Thousand Suns players really want GW to do, expand the range. But we'll talk about that in a second. It's just that, yeah, the Rubik Marines are basically the star of the show. And the Zangors are just there to be accepted. And yeah, they kind of deal with them. And that's kind of how I see it too. The Zangors are okay, especially the... The pistol and chainsaw Zangors look a little bit more, you know, setting appropriate. But all in all, Zangors are really just filler material and chaff and models that die really, really quickly. And yeah, people just don't want to field or own 90 of them. It just doesn't make any sense to have that many of them. And they are in every single value box. So let's go over the value boxes that have released recently. And that will include some Age of Sigma ones because some of the Age of Sigma ones actually do make sense for Thousand Suns as well. So you have the two uh, Zinj battle forces from the last couple of years. And yeah, you can see Zangors made it in bo into both of them. That was a little bit to be expected. But even there, uh, Zinj in Age of Sigma has a lot more options than just Zangors. But they are still included. In one battle force, they were the main bulk of the army. In the other one, they were just thrown in there for good measure. And yeah, to just differentiate the box, make it a little bit more colorful compared to all the humanoids and humans that are there. And next up there is obviously the Thousand Suns start collecting. And there's an Ariman in there, 10 Rubik Marines and 10 Zangors. And Zangors made it in there again to no one's surprise, and there is an Ariman in there. And I'm glad Ariman is not part of the Combat Patrol because he's been part of the Star Collecting for quite a while now. And I feel like everyone or every Thousand Suns veteran already has multiple uh, kits of him and they don't really need more. And if a new Thousand Suns player wants to come around and play him and every Thousand Suns player does, uh, they can just buy him separately. And the Combat Patrol has a little bit something different in terms of the HQ choice. But again, Zangors are in there. Next up, we go to the Hexfire box. And surprise, Zangors are in there again. The Hexfire box is probably more or less the inspiration, quote unquote, for the Combat Patrol box. They are very similar. The Combat Patrol doesn't have a Shaman, but they have more Zangors. And that's basically it. Um, yeah, Zangors again. And as you can see, Zangors have been a huge part of all the value boxes for Zinj or Thousand Suns related boxes. And it's just something a Thousand Suns players don't want anymore. They don't need any more of them. And it would be nice to have boxes full of Scarab or Quill Terminators and Rubik Marines and maybe a Rhino because they're popular as well. And just having a little bit something different and not just all Zangors. That's the first prob problem. The second problem is Zangors are also pretty bad. In the new codex, Zangors are just not good. You need Rubik Marines to run Zangors, so you can't spam them. They're a little bit expensive for what they do, and they die like flies. And they don't really have enough of a damage output to warrant their points cost. And they are already very cheap. So, yeah, that's another problem. 
they weren't that great in the last codex in the eighth edition one but at least they were somewhat playable you could use them for screening and uh, and such but yeah in the new codex they are just not that great and that's another reason why a lot of people are avoiding them not everyone's playing competitively don't get me wrong a lot of people are just playing their thousand suns to look thematic and stuff but even those players usually prefer to have an all rubic marine army um yeah zangos just don't, don't really fit in there and that gets us to the last point i wanted to talk about and that is the range and the size of the range thousand suns and their codex and the number of data sheets they have is tiny and that they even have their own book is kind of more or less a miracle with the number of data sheets they have and it's not to say they shouldn't have their own book that's to say they should get more models i think um the gw just added the infernal master this year around or this um additional round is fine but i would wish that for 10th edition gw would sit down at the faction specific rhinos i forgot their name librarian dreadnoughts because thousand suns if i didn't get my law mixed up are inventors of librarian dreadnoughts and just more different rubik marine variants and stuff just adding more variety to the faction is what the faction really needs and that would enable gw to not throw uh those zangors into every single box and that would you know get rid of all the problems just adding more models to the faction and i hope they don't repeat the mistake in the future with the world eaters and the emperor's children because those ranges need a little bit more variety as well and not just a terminator variant a basic space marine variant and a couple of demons that are just thrown in there for good measure they kind of need a little bit more than that to be their own faction in their own right other than that as i said you can expect the full review once there is an announcement that this box is going to release i will sit down analyze it properly talk about all those things again maybe even at length who know who knows but yeah we'll go over savings and so on so if you're interested in hearing all of that consider subscribing other than that if you found this video helpful or any videos on the channel consider checking out the channel's patreon if you want to support empire of war games i would appreciate it a lot all right thank you so much for listening and i see you in the next one bye bye